Hey everyone, welcome back to Connecting the Dots. I am so excited for this episode with Kelly Castle. She has been a teacher to me in astrology and I'm excited for her to share so much more with all of you. But I would love for you to introduce yourself, Kelly, and share a little bit about who you are. Yeah, thank you so much, Kathleen, for inviting me today. My name is Kelly Castle, and I am an astrologer and human design specialist, currently based in Dallas, Texas. We're going to get into kind of my story and how I came to, to this work, but as an astrologer, I am sort of like a, a therapist, a counselor, a historian, a mathematician, a philosopher, kind of all put into one. And that is what I love about this job so much is it combines so many of my interests. And so especially in my work now, I both teach astrology and human design to people that are interested in learning how to use these tools in your daily life. But I also work with one-on-one -on -one clients, um, and that work is especially for people who are going through transitions in their life of, of whatever magnitude, whether they're big transitions or there's shifts in their life that they want help reflecting on and figuring out kind of which way the universe is helping to kind of push them right and so that's that's a lot of my my work is is helping people navigate life yeah and i have been lucky enough to attend some of your monthly teachings of astrology in particular and have found it really interesting and love the way that you teach it's part storytelling part learning the basics um, and then you let the people in the group practice what they know and you guide them. So they're really fun experiences and very helpful if you're interested in astrology. And I've also chatted with you about my Saturn return, which we can get into a little bit later. But before we, so anyways, I just wanted to plug that you've been very helpful to me but before we get into all the good stuff, I'm asking all my guests this season, what is a daily ritual or habit of yours? Ooh, that's a great question. So I would say for me, my morning routine, which is actually fairly simple, is pretty important to me. As a triple, so I'm a triple Pisces, triple Aquarius, Cancer Rising. If anyone's ever curious, like you hear the big three, right? Yeah. I'm a Pisces, Sun and Moon and a Cancer Rising. Lots of water in my chart, lots of air. But it's really funny that I have a Jupiter in Virgo across from all of that to balance it all out. And <clears throat> my North Node is in the sixth house, just to kind of like give people a little astrology lingo when we're talking about these things. And the sixth house has to do with routine. And for me, it's Capricorn. So actually having a, a very strong like... Um, <clears throat> regular kind of daily routine to keep myself healthy is super important to my well-being and success. Capricorn is all about long-term success and growth. So when I wake up, I have to like get up immediately, get myself going, eat breakfast in the morning, do some light movement, and then I can go on throughout my day. I'm not much of a morning person, so I just need to stick to the the habits and the flow to get me going in my day. So for me, actually, that's like the most important things. Eggs for breakfast, some movement, and I'm good to go. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I love that. You're <clears throat> helping out your body throughout the day, giving yourself some nourishment, yeah. energy. That's great. Actually, one other little thing to add to that, which it's funny, I don't even like think about anymore. I, I've been oil pulling for probably 
14 years now. Like the first thing I do is chug a glass of water, sometimes with lemon, sometimes not, or even apple cider vi- vinegar if that's like the season. And I oil pull as I'm making breakfast. So for anyone who's never tried it, highly recommend. Love oil pulling. What do you use? You just use um, coconut? Just coconut. Yep. I don't, I've experimented like with putting different essential oils in it. And for me, just pure coconut oil is the way to go. Love that. (laughs) I I gave a workshop a couple of weeks ago about wellness in general. And I had a slide on oral health and your oral microbiome. And I brought up oil pulling and they're like, how long do you do it? Like 30 seconds? (laughs) Like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. How? And so I love how you said you do it while you're making breakfast because I'm like, I'm not just standing at my bathroom sink <laughs> swishing around. Yeah, I know for 10 minutes. Yeah, no, no, it's perfect to if you do it as you're making breakfast, you know, maybe I'm organizing some things, whatever. And then instead, because as so I'm also a classical musician that'll kind of be part of the story we we tell today I brush my teeth so many times throughout the day already before I play my instrument that to clean out the oil I spit it out in the trash and then I gargle with warm salt water so again I put my tea kettle on with the water as I'm making breakfast it's ready to go by the time breakfast is done swish it out you get it like a good clean mouth in the morning and then you just feel amazing it wakes you up yeah and how good is gargling for your uh, vagus nerve too yeah it. thank you for those tips so also I love how you've been incorporating your chart into the questions that I'm asking so fun and so would love to know how did you learn all about this how did you start to utilize your chart into your daily life. How did you get here? Yeah. So I would say for the majority of people who get into doing astrology and human design as a job, especially, most of us didn't start out with an interest in this from the time we were young. Some people grew up with like spiritual parents and kind of more the the hippie generation, right? And so they had that foundation. But for most of us, including myself, I went through a huge life crisis and change in 2020, which was at my Saturn return. And I definitely fell on the more extreme side of Saturn Return and Saturn Return stories. So I am a classical musician professionally. I play the bassoon. I went to school at a really famous music conservatory, knew that I was going to take and and have a musical career, ended up moving to Los Angeles and building a full-time freelance career for myself as a performer, music educator, and event producer. So prior to the to COVID, we'll call it, I was living a fantastic life in Los Angeles, like just having the best time. My career was going really well, loving life. But being in LA, it was so cool. Like I really got to dive into the spiritual scene since Los Angeles is kind of a mecca in the United States for spirituality. So like yoga, I had had a or developed a strong meditation practice, sound baths, all sorts of healing, like subconscious program, you know, all the stuff. I just, I was really into it in, in my off hours. It's kind of my hobby. And then we're going into 2020 and the world collapsed, right? Like my birthday is March 3rd. Some friends and I had this amazing birthday party March 7th. And then exactly a week later, March 15th, like the world fell, right? Fell apart. And as a freelancer, all of my gigs, I had all of this stuff scheduled out, was just gone overnight. And at that point, so astrology had already kind of creeped into my life at the end of 2019. The guy that ended up becoming my teacher, David Palmer, the Leo King, 
at the end of 2019, he had this huge YouTube show called Deep Love Tarot that I was watching each week. And he was warning everyone that a ginormous plague was coming with the onset of the Saturn and Pluto conjunction in Capricorn. And so then I started, and then I watched this play out, right? And I'm like, oh my God, there is something to this stuff. And if David could make all these predictions, then I watched as more of his predictions started coming true. What can I learn about my life from this? And now I had all this free time on my hands. And so I just started studying for fun. And I found that when I went back and looked at my charts at all of the major dates and turning points in my life, they were all there and like spot on there and even, you know, my own personality and stuff. And so I just started doing readings for friends for fun. And I mean, through that period, like my dad died, I got booted from my career for choosing to not take the vaccine. So then I had to leave my home in Los Angeles. Like my whole life got turned upside down within the period of six months. And I'm like, what is going on? You know, none of the traditional subconscious programming work could describe this level of life change. And so I started diving in and then I saw it all in my charts and I saw, whoa, like my Saturn return is about becoming a whole new version of me and taking me on this next basically book. I looked at it as closing one entire book of my life and opening a whole new book, not just chapters, but book. And so I just found it fascinating. And I had always loved studying people anyways. I was always interested in the psychology of artists and entrepreneurs. And so as I started doing readings, I found I had a really natural talent for it. I've been a teacher for a decade now. So I have a fundamental understanding of how the brain develops, how people think and process and learn. I was a consultant to artists and art organizations for a long, long time. So like combining all of these skills, basically my music career set me up to have a successful career and be a great astrologer. And you are amazing. I will definitely vouch. And thank you so much for sharing your story and all that you went through to get to where you are now. And so we'll love to hear because I think it's really helpful for listeners who are going through a tough time or have been through one to hear how did you handle all of these changes, the tragic events that were occurring and lean into astrology and human design and come out of it the other side? Yeah, that's a great question. Just know that we live through cycles in our life and that whatever you're going through right now, it is a phase and it will pass. <laughs> now, you need to be able to look at whatever situation you're in, whatever transition, and understand where you're coming from, all of the discomforts you're in right now, what are the lessons, and like where is it taking you? The changes are, they, they actually come from your higher self saying, hey, there's been something else that your soul really, really wants that it is ready to take you to. And now it's time to make the changes to move into that next chapter. Oftentimes, just like in health, right, when we are doing detox protocols, you get worse before you get better. You have to like let your body, let your soul and your life metaphorically bring out, clear out all of the, the gunk and the old energy that no longer serves you to move on to the next chapter of your life. That can oftentimes meaning having to let go of things, people, places, ways of being 
to develop new habits, make new friends, connections, all of that. So transitions aren't always easy. And I mean, if you think back to when you were growing up as a kid, right, we had growing pains. You feel the aches and the pains in your muscles and joints as you're growing. That process never stops. We're constantly growing. It's just no longer necessarily your body getting bigger. It's now your own personality and and habits and things and kind of just to to tangent that the way that i view astrology and that i really i want people to take this nugget away is that with each sign and you could call that like the personality traits the lessons and things that go along with each there are levels of consciousness and so it's my belief that our chart shows the core of our being of who we always are. Like if you were born as the seed of a oak tree, you're going to go through different stages of being that tree, but at your core, you're still an oak tree. But like with the sign of Leo on the more, instead of using the words good or bad, I use constructive and destructive. On the destructive side of the personality, it's going to be someone who is super greedy, super attention seeking, probably because they had a lot of wounding in childhood about being seen and validation, right? But on the positive side of spectrum, they're going to bring a lot of light and joy and love to the room and just like radiate that energy without any judgment. And so what I encourage people to do is use the astrological wheel to look at the personality traits that you very naturally enact and embody and see where you are on the spectrum of each trait. And then also look at the other signs that you may not have as close of a relationship with that don't come as naturally to you. But at times in life, you're going to need to learn how to do that thing or be that for a moment in time. We are like, all of it really at our core. It's just just like cr baking a cake or something, right? There's going to be more of one ingredient than the others. So it's, it's all this beautiful dance and creating this symphony that is you and it changes over time. Yeah. I really love the, the seed to oak tree analogy. That's mm -hmm. really cool of thinking of it in that way, because it's so true you are who you are at your core but you don't all the seed doesn't always look like the big tree <laughs> um, yeah yeah that was, really, that was really cool and I also resonated with what you said about thinking about which signs that you gravitate towards mm -hmm. and which ones you potentially don't because I think it's very interesting that the majority of my friends are the same four signs predominantly of course there's outliers but like the vast yeah. majority fall under the same four and then my partner is um a Sagittarius sun and a pipe double Pisces moon and rising and I don't really have any friends that are those two signs and so I always say that he's like my greatest teacher because uh -huh. he really challenges me in good ways but I always just think about that of like who am I gravitated towards and I always said like Luke is not like anyone else in my uh -huh. life or anyone that I've dated before or all these things and so you just made me think about that yeah yeah so you kind of already shared with your morning routine how you use your chart in your daily life but what additional value does understanding your chart bring to people and how can after having a session with you and getting a better understanding of their chart how can they use that in their life yeah great question so when someone comes and does what I call the astrology soul blueprint reading with me, which is generally the first reading that someone's going to do. And 
in the way I work with clients, I always start with astrology because to me, it gives a person truly the best overview of themselves and their life that they can digest easily enough. Human design is amazing to take it to the next level, but there are so many details within human design. It can be overwhelming to start there. So my recommendation, start with astrology. When you come and do a session with me, we're going to go through all of the major traits in your chart. And I'm going to point out what those traits are and how they interact with each other. That's huge when you're working with astrology. You can't just isolate like your Venus, your Sun, your Mercury. You need to understand them from a holistic perspective and how they relate to each other. And I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about yourself to see how aware you are of these traits and how they are playing out in your life. Are you using the traits constructively or destructively? And so people most often in my readings are one amazed at like how well, how accurately the charts describe them, but also kind of the questions that I bring and they're like, whoa, I never thought about myself or this aspect of my life or me in this way. And with this problem, this block, whatever I'm going through right now, oh man, this is like really bringing a new perspective to this that then they can take and this work is all about being able to shift your perspective of yourself. And generally, when people are stuck somewhere, it's because they're stuck in a particular perspective and they're not seeing the whole picture yet. They're not seeing that there are other options available to them. They just need to widen their scope. And so that's my job is to come in and, and help give you those other perspectives. Yeah. And it's so fun when we had coffee and you gave me a little Saturn return reading and you're like, are <laughs> random things just happening to you? Just like falling out of the sky. And I was like, yes, so <laughs> random. I got, I got the offer to be a co-founder of a company. I got the offer to speak for a corporate business that I have zero ties to. I know nobody there did not know who reached out to me. And I was like, yes, it, these two random, really amazing opportunities truly did just fall out of the sky. And that has stuck with me since then, because I was like, I agree. There is for sure a lot to this, but I believe that before I had coffee with you, but it was pretty <laughs> fun to be confirmed or affirmed in that way. Yeah. And so we kind of mentioned it a little bit. Your you went through your Saturn return and it was a lot. Yeah. And I am currently in mine. Yeah. And so for listeners who aren't sure what the heck we're talking about, can you explain what a Saturn return is and how it can be such a vital time in somebody's life? Yeah. So once you have learned your own birth chart, because you're going to use that now in this next phase, which is there are what I call these big ages in astrology, which are these, they can be big turning points in your life. These are the ages and the, the points where people get married, divorced, change jobs, move, have children, someone dies, all of these sorts of big life events that really change the trajectory of your life. And so those major ages are 18, 28, round 36, 37, around 42. It's actually where this term midlife crisis comes from, the Uranus opposition, <laughs> um, 50 and 60. So this point around 29 years old, the Saturn return, um, like theoretically, what's what's actually happening is the planet Saturn, so you're born with it at a particular place in the sky, right? You take a snapshot of where those stars and planets were. It's going to go all the way around and it takes about 29 years for it to go all the way around the sun and it comes back to that same point. Now, the planet Saturn is about 
structure, limitations, planning, being a responsible adult. So at around that age, it is going to bring in lessons about how you need to basically grow up into kind of the next level of being an adult. Your 20s are now coming to a close. In astrology, your 20s are really about expanding your scopes, your belief systems, going and exploring, trying out lots of things. And now heading into your 30s, Saturn comes along and says, okay, well, there are now things that are going to require more of a long-term commitment, like growing a successful business, like growing a family, having kids that are going to require you to be a bit more of an adult. And so that Saturn return point is going to now push you in that direction. With these sorts of big transits, as we kind of touched on earlier, there's the lead up point, there is kind of the the day or week of, and then there is starting to head in that direction. So it really does encompass the period of anywhere from six months to two years. And it kind of gets you going in a new direction. It's not like everything necessarily happens at once. Like even with my life, with all of those changes, that was just the beginning of this this next story, right? I, I didn't have it all figured out then. So just know if you're at one of these turning point ages I just mentioned, that's just that redirective point. And it may not be something huge. It, it may be like, oh, okay, my company has said that they want me to move locations, but even just because of that move, even if you're staying in the same job, right? Moving to a new city is going to bring about a whole new like boat of opportunities and things, right? So it's really fun that we get to evolve throughout life and have different experiences, perspectives of this reality we live in. Yeah, totally. And I was just thinking about how funny it is my fiance's and his friends the majority of them all proposed to me and their fiance's wives the same week oh wow like a few weeks and I I was just like this feels so funny but now that I'm like they all were exiting their sudden return at the same time like to me I was like oh what did you guys do just like make a pact like hey ready now but maybe it has more to do with them being ready at an astral yeah and if you look at your chart, you're going to see what area of life is going to be the big catalyst and change and that's where now I love using astrology because you can kind of use it to plan ahead and say okay I'm going to start to see and feel changes in this area of life. And I'm just going to be prepared for that as it comes. <laughs> yeah. So to that point, how can you use astrology to improve somebody's experience during their Saturn return or any of the big ages? Yeah. So number one is kind of being prepared. Like if I look at a chart and I see, oh man, like big changes are coming in this person's life, especially if they're not super conscious yet of some of the destructive habits that are potentially self-sabotaging them when they're really wanting to move in a different direction. You know, I have a conversation with people of like, okay, it's it's time to develop some new habits. It's time to make sure that you have a really healthy community around you and strong support system around you. You know, if a family member dies, that can be a really hard time in, in someone's life, especially if you don't have a strong support system. So it's really helping people do an inventory of, of their life and seeing where the story where do I have my strengths and where are my weaknesses and where can we bolster those kind of weak points in your life? How do you not, how do you help people not freak out? <laughs> 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 <Better> word. <laughs> yeah. So 
I've been told it's it's been really interesting, like especially in the last six months, I've attracted just naturally a lot of licensed therapists to my work and my workshops and lectures and things. And so many of them have come up and told me that the way that I do astrology and teach is very similar to what's called internal family systems or parts work. Yeah. And so basically I'm helping people see that inherently in our personalities, some people have these different internal parts that are pulling them in different directions. And that's where people can feel so much like angst and, and anxiety inside of them that at times there are these parts that one part wants this, one part wants that, one part wants this, right? And that can be really hard to figure out how to make them all happy. So what I help people do is go through and say, what strategies can we implement to make these internal relationships more harmonious? And how can we make these different parts happy? Also realizing that at times there are going to be parts that you need to concentrate on, but say like, I know I can't give this one part my all right now. We're going to have to put it to the side for a bit, but know that it's not for forever and to learn to be emotionally and mentally okay with that. Even like an example from my own life, when I went to grad school for two years, I had to put my entrepreneurial dreams on hold, which was really sad for that part of me, which is a big part of my personality, life, my goals and stuff. However, during those two years, um, I was presented with the opportunity to really get to learn how to be an amazing teacher. And I was surrounded by this support system of my teachers at my school and the places that I got to student teach and support to really run with that and dig in for those two years, knowing that I was going to get to, when I graduate, move to Los Angeles and get back to my other dreams. So... If you have someone come along to help you reflect and say, look, I know at this time it can be hard to have to kind of put aside this part of yourself, but no, it's not for forever. And when you get to this turning point, which astrology is because it has that time element, it's going to show you when that point is, you're going to get to come back to it. So the more that we can understand that life is cyclical and it's not going to stay like this for forever, the more we can be okay with where we are now. That's really helpful. And I totally can relate to what you were saying. I feel like that was me this last two years of I'm working so hard to this goal and I just want to be there. Like I just want to be a business owner and be done with the certification and be done with applying for licensure and done with the little itty bitty things that need to be done. And I felt that like inner turmoil of, I, I don't want to be doing this. I just want to be where I want to be. I know I'm going to get there. And that was, that was, cha was really challenging <laughs> to, oh. To sit back and be like, you've got to do the work to get to where you want to be, though, and you just let it let it happen and take the lessons from what you're learning. But mm -hmm. it's tough, so I'm I'm glad that you're able to provide that for people and help and show them in their charts, like, hey, seriously, it's not forever, but you've got to <laughs> focus on this now, and it will be important. It will be a part of your story. Yeah. I really also appreciated how you said that astrology can be, a, I don't want to incorrectly paraphrase what you said, but like a, yeah. better, a better entry point for this work. And then human design is like the next stage that you usually do. Can you kind of chat a little bit about what human design is? Yeah, sure. So human design was a system that was channeled by this guy named Ra Uru. He was a Westerner, but he had this whole spiritual awakening and moved to Biza, changed his name, 
And he downloaded this whole system, which combines astrology, the Chinese I Ching, the Kabbalah system, and in a way, the like Hindu chakra system. Mm. And so basically, it overlays the Chinese I Ching wheel of all of the hexagrams on top of the astrological wheel. And so instead of your chart being, you know, your Saturn in Capricorn, your sun in Pisces, whatever, it's your sun in, in the human design system, they call it this gate. And so it just goes into much more detail about, especially, I, I really look at human design, these gates, these I Ching hexagrams, as different characters, these 64 characters in life. <laughs> and it's kind of like, which character and part of the hero's journey story are you playing out? So it it really gives a person a good idea of what role within a community society they are naturally designed to play. And it also shows a lot of energetics about how a person communicates with the universe naturally and how they are naturally meant to flow through the universe. It's a really great system for seeing, oh man, I've always felt like I'm really meant to be a mom and more of that home nurture, or I'm meant to be the king or the jester or the knight, the warrior, kind of understanding those archetypes, understanding if you're a person who's meant to more sit back, let things come to you, be the guide, be the person to come up with the ideas, get them going, and then move on to the next one, be the, the busy bee, like really understanding your role. So whenever I in my actually my astrology soul blueprint session i give people their basic human design traits which if you start to look in the system you'll learn about your your type your profile there's like these little numbers and we kind of talk about some of those basics but with both human design and then if you want to take it one step forward to the gene keys um they're phenomenal systems to kind of study the aspects one by one and use them as self-reflective tools to sit with one gate or in gene keys, one key and say, ooh, how is this one aspect showing up in my life? And am I living out in the gene keys, they call it the shadow, or am I living the, the city, which is like the higher state? And so I've, yeah, I've found those systems to be really beautiful, self-reflective systems. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. And I think people might know a little bit about human design if they've ever heard of like, I'm a projector, I'm a generator, yeah. I'm a manifesting generator. <clears throat> Maybe that has been people's entry points of learning that fact about them. The way that I was introduced to human design and gene keys was from entrepreneurs that I would be like, how are you doing this? How do you run a business? How do you stay sane with yeah. all of the different responsibilities that you have on your plate? And a few of the people that I chatted with said, I lean into my human design or I lean into my gene keys. And then from having a good understanding of those aspects of myself, I'm much better able to take on the projects that fill my cup and delegate what doesn't. <laughs> yes, yes. And so that's, for me, I actually do corporate team readings. They're one of my favorite things that I do because I really get to combine my consulting work from the arts world with this psychological work, basically. And for me, it's really about whatever the client wants to know. And like within team readings, human design with the, the profile types is so helpful to see if people are playing out their right roles on a team. So having a manifester or a manifesting generator 
one projector and a handful of generators is a really healthy team. And then using, um, for me, it's not about sticking to one system, but using the systems based on whatever questions we have. So looking for people's motivations. What is someone motivated by? If, if you're having problem with a team member or something and you're realizing, huh, like they just don't have the right motivation right now to do this job, you're going to have to figure out new motivational strategies, right? If there are problems between people with communication, we need to better understand how someone thinks and communicates. And obviously they're there are two people butting heads right now. So either we need to learn about their communication strategies or like move the team around. So it really depends on what questions you need answers and kind of like what the, the problems are. And you can go to the different systems to find those answers. That was so cool. I now want to recommend you to all small businesses. <laughs> I mean, not just small, but... I know a lot of small businesses and be like, you need to, you need to, <laughs> but on, under the same vein, how do you not get overwhelmed with all three systems that you're able to work with and talk to people about? Because I know <laughs> knowing my astrological chart and my human yeah. and my gene keys, I'm overwhelmed sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah. What do I do with all of this information? So how do you yeah. kind of stay grounded and then also help people not get overwhelmed? Yeah. So first to just address anyone that is starting to come to use these systems, my first recommendation is only do one at a time. <laughs> Don't try and just dive into all of them at once because you're going to be on information overload and you're not going to know what to do with it. So my recommendation, start with astrology and like sit with your chart for a good three to six months and journal about like go through each of your aspects and kind of watch for a couple of weeks. How are they showing up in my life? And Ooh, maybe this one aspect, which there are challenging parts of our personalities that show up in these things. And oftentimes those are the parts of ourselves that we don't want to look at, whether it is a shadow and something, you know, programmed or we should say trauma, right? There's the childhood trauma. There is the programming from society, parents and stuff. And then there is our inherent personality traits. So you do kind of have to dig through those things and see how they're showing up in your life. But start with astrology. Then I'd say move to human design and then to gene keys. So just do one at a time and like sit with them, journal with them daily for a good few months. For me, and to help people understand why astrology is not something to be passed over. Also, it is it is really funny. A lot of people I see who like want to kind of bash on astrology get really into human design. And I'm like, do you not understand that astrology is the basis? <laughs> like they're, they're inseparable. They're, they are the same thing. So I think that's really funny. But astrology, math, and music are all the exact same languages just through different symbols. They all describe the exact same things using their unique languages. So it's it's just like if you were speaking English, Mandarin, and Spanish. You cannot judge one without judging the other. And so when I was heading to school and deciding what career life to choose, I had the choice between chemical engineering and music and ended up getting into the best music conservatory in America. And music had already taken me all over the world. I was like, whoa, I can make a career out of this. Amazing, right? But in school, I did end up doing a math minor. And so because I have such an amazing foundation of 
both music and math, when I came to astrology, I found that it was so similar to both of these other languages. And in fact, it's not just similar, they're really the same thing, just mirrored. So in the same way that I am able to look at a Beethoven score and hear all of the parts in my head because of my training, I can do the same thing with astrology or human design or whatever. I've I've trained my brain and built it up through the development of, of math and music I had in my early career. I just have the brain that can like process all of this. This this really is how I'm built. So for me, it it came very naturally and easy to me. But I'll just say with that, in my own studies, I didn't go all in on all three at the same time. I learned the systems just like if you're learning math or or music, you don't jump from playing hot cross buns as an 11 year old to playing a Beethoven symphony, right? It takes years to develop those skills and understandings. You don't go from addition to being able to do advanced calculus overnight. And same thing with these systems. There is so much information in the way of reading and interpreting them that takes time that if you really want to learn to use these systems, you're just going to have to give yourself time to learn. Yeah, that's really helpful too. I, I love the way that you use analogies. I they all I'm always like, oh, such a great way to explain it. I think that in the sessions that I have with you and during this conversation, I'm always like, how did you just like <laughs> analyze that perfectly? So thank you for that. And you're welcome. Throughout Thanks. our conversation, you've plugged some of the different offerings that you have from yeah. your blueprint readings to the corporate team readings. So how can people work with you? What are the different offerings that you have that might pique our listeners' interest? Yeah. So if a lot of people don't, they end up like not having the time in their life or whatever to really want to learn these systems themselves, right? So my private clients are those who understand the value of using these systems in their life, but don't want to learn themselves. So private clients, you can come and do sessions with me. And what I love about astrology is is it is a holistic system of looking at all areas of life. And so if you want to do a love reading, if you want to do a planning ahead to help kind of plan your next six to eight months, you want to dive into your chart, we can go into different aspects of your life depending on where you are and and what you're growing into or what challenge you're overcoming at the time. So that's my private client work. If you go to, it's it's linktree slash my name, Kelly Castle. You can go to my, my book a reading page and all the different reading types are there based on your needs. And there's even like, I, I have just a, a one hour coaching session. So if you know, ooh, I have one thing right now I really want to dig into, come and do an hour with me. And it, again, it's kind of like a therapy session, counseling session. The corporate team readings, I'm doing a lot more of those these days. I love it. It's it's a full day experience where I'm working with teams between three and 12 people. It could even be a team within a bigger corporation. It's just more working with these kind of smaller teams to help make sure that the team is, is working effectively, to make sure communication's on point, people are in the right roles, People have motivations in place, like looking at all of that. And then for those that want to learn more about astrology, you want to learn, I teach a lot of workshops, both in person and online. And so just keep an eye on my link tree and my calendar for my offerings. Right now, I am based in Dallas, and I've been doing a lot of live lectures here, but I'm starting to expand into going into other cities and stuff. And so if you are are in, especially right now, LA, Austin, Miami, then reach out and I would love to, to set up teaching a workshop. Yeah. And we have a fun workshop on the books in Austin yes. next year. So yeah. really great. 
how can, so I know you said your link tree, but is there any other yeah. places that people can reach out to you to work with you? Yeah. So best places right now are Linktree slash Kelly Castle and my Instagram. It's at K-K-A-S-L-E. Yeah. Last name is spelled funny, but it's it's pronounced Castle. <laughs> awesome. And then my last question for you is the closing question this season, which is what is one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Mm-hmm. So I would tell my younger self that your life is going to be a wild ride and full of surprises. And it is going to take twists and turns that you can, you never could have imagined before, but it's all going to be okay. It's, it's all going to still be magical and even when you're going through those tough transitions, know that you're going to come out the other side into a whole new magical chapter. And sometimes those moments that do turn someplace you never would have expected and weren't planning on, maybe didn't want, really do lead into the the most magical chapters. So just be, stay open to life. Learn to let your emotions come through and flow, not to harbor them and and stay open to what life and the universe has to offer you. Thank you so much. That was beautifully said. And I think everybody needs to hear a little bit of that, especially (laughs) during the crazier times. And thank you so much for being such a good teacher to me. I love attending your monthly session. The way I found you was actually by attending one of your bigger workshops at a community event and really just appreciated the way that you explain things, the way that you talk about astrology and that even when you're talking about some more serious or less exciting events that you make it feel manageable and that, hey, you have this information. It's what you do with it. It's how you set yourself up for it. And it it doesn't make it seem scary, which I really appreciate. And I'm just excited to continue to work with you and learn more about myself and the people around me through all of the amazing insights that you have. Oh, thank you so much, Kathleen. I really appreciate the those kind words. And yeah, I look forward to having you in class again. Our, our classes are so much fun. What, what she's referring to just real quick is I run a once a month free online class. We kind of have a core group of people now that come every month and it's super fun to dive into ch- to charts and like what reading astrology really is, what doing it is. So, so glad. And thank you so much for today this has been so much fun yeah thank you have a good one i hope you enjoyed this episode of connecting the dots if there was something that really resonated with you in this episode or you simply enjoyed the topic please share it with a friend or leave a five-star rating and a written review also make sure you subscribe to connecting the dots on the streaming platform of your choice so you can be the first to listen when a new episode is released for more information or to work with me go to www.kathleencarney.com or follow me at Kathleen Carney Wellness on Instagram and TikTok. Follow the show on Instagram at connectingthedots.podcast and on TikTok at connectingthedotspodcast. I appreciate your continued support and I look forward to hanging with you next week.